Hola chicos, hola chicas. Welcome to another video, Saca Puntas DCHC. Now, today we are in central London, we are in Soho, and uh, we came here to this place. Yes, that's a water pump, because today we are going to talk about water, agua. We are going to learn five expressions that we use a lot in Spanish with agua, and they are going to be very really useful for your DCHC. In writing or in speaking. This water pump has a lot of history. John Snow, a doctor who worked in London at that time, 1854, made an amazing discovery. A breakthrough in the study of cholera and how it was transmitted to human beings. Now he discovered that the source of the cholera outbreak that affected London that summer wasn't because the air, but because the contaminated water from this very water pump. Now, there's an amazing book that you can read as well, El Mapa Fantasma, or The Ghost Map, and explains very well all this amazing story. Now, let's talk about five expressions in Spanish with agua. No contaminated water, but just normal water. Agua. Me hace la boca agua. It makes my mouth water, literally, or mouth watering, you will say in English. Now, this expression, we use that a lot, and you can use it instead of some adjectives that you already know, probably. I'll give you an example. Me encanta comer tarta de queso, cheesecake, porque es delicioso, delicious, sabroso, tasty, and rico, like nice, rich. Now, instead of this, you can use me hace la boca agua. I'll give you another example. Me encanta comer churros con chocolate. Mmm, qué bueno. Porque me hace la boca agua. And again, in here, you don't have to put S. Literally, I like or I love to eat uh, churros con chocolate because it makes my, water, uh, my mouth water. Mouth watering. Me hace la boca agua. No se calla ni debajo del agua. Now, this is really interesting, and you can use this one to describe someone else when that person is really talkative. I explain what actually means. Now, debajo del agua means literally under the water, debajo del agua. And guess what? Under the water, you know, if you really talk under the water, is because you are really talkative. It's no se calla ni debajo del agua literally means it's not even quiet even under the water, because no se calla means that you are actually not quiet, you are not in silence, so you are really talkative. Mi hermano es muy hablador. Now, hablador is the probably the most common adjective that you probably already know. Hablador, talkative. But if you really want to get more marks and be a little bit more creative, you can use instead of hablador, mi hermano no se calla ni debajo del agua. My brother is not quiet, even under the water. You can use this expression with, uh, as well, a feminine person or a female person. Mi hermana no se calla ni debajo del agua. My sister is really talkative. Is not even quiet under the water. No se calla ni debajo del agua. Como dos gotas de agua. I love this one. If you want to talk about or describe someone who is very similar to another person, you can say similar, uh, which is pretty actually similar in Spanish and in English. It's the same, similar. But you can say as well, como dos gotas de agua. Now, gota or gotas is drops of water. Drops. So the drops of water are pretty similar. So you are literally saying the my, mis tías, Son como dos gotas de agua. My aunties are like uh, two drops of water. Very similar. Mis primos son como dos gotas de agua. Although in here I would say tres gotas de agua. Como dos gotas de agua. Like two drops of water. Very similar. No da un palo al agua. 
Again, you can use this expression to describe someone which is a little bit lazy. I explain. In Spanish, to, to talk about someone who is lazy, we say vago or vaga if it's a girl. Or as well, we can say perezoso or perezosa, lazy. Both of these adjectives you can use. Now, palo is the rowing pole that you use to row. Now, you need to imagine that you are on a boat and you are a group of people rowing and someone actually is free riding, is not doing anything, is not putting the rowing pole into the water. That is actually what literally means. No da un palo al agua means that you don't give literally the rowing pole to the water. You basically are not rowing, you are not doing anything, you are free riding. Mi amigo o mi amiga no da un palo al agua. So instead of vago o perezoso, lazy, you can say, no da un palo al agua. My friend is not actually doing anything. Mi hermano o mi hermana, remember, it doesn't matter if it's a girl or a boy, no da un palo al agua. No da un palo al agua. Being lazy, or literally, don't put the rowing pole into the water. And the last one is... Es un aguafiestas. And you need to imagine that you are having a party, a fiesta, a fiesta, and someone actually put water into that party. I guess because back in the days, you will have a fire and then, you know, someone will drop water into the fire and the party was finished. You will say kill joy killer or joy killer or um, basically um, wet blanket. Agua fiestas, someone who basically spoils the party. Mm -hmm.